Welcome back to Hackcode. In this video, we're gonna tackle the lead code problem, best time to buy and sell stock. We'll explore two approaches, the brute force method and a more efficient one pass solution. This is a classic problem that's crucial for interpretation. Don't worry, I'll explain you in such a way that you'll never forget it. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into maximize those profits. So what's the problem statement here? You are given an array prices where price of I is the price of a given stock on the I today. We are clear, right? So this prices is basically an array which represents the price of the given stock on the i the day. Next, what the given? You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. And then return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you can't achieve any profit, return zero. So pretty simple, right? We just need to return the maximum profit we can achieve. And what is the condition given that? Like we can't sell on the same day. We have to sell in the future day. Makes sense, right? Here, you know the profit form, right? It's selling price minus cost price. It's a simple thing. We just need to calculate the maximum profit we can achieve. So let's look at example one. They're giving the prices as this array. So basically here the output is five. Why? So they've given the explanation as buy on day two, price is equals to one. We see right, this is day one, this is day two, the price is equal to one here and sell on the day five, where price is equal to six. So the profit is what? Six minus one, that is five. That is understandable. And then note that buying on the day two and selling on day one is not allowed because you must buy before you sell it. Makes sense, right? So it's just pretty self-explanatory guys. Example two, here they mentioned prices is equal to 76431. So it's a decreasing graph, right? So we can't achieve any profit by selling it. So output is zero because they told us to return zero if you don't achieve any profit. So that's the explanation they given. In this case, no transactions are done and the maximum profit is equal to zero. Cool. So what are the constraints? So prices dot length is in the inclusive range of one to 10 power five. Okay, this price array length is in the inclusive range of one to 10 power five. And then prices of I is in the inclusive range of zero to 10 to the power of four. Basically here the array element lies in the inclusive range of zero to 10 power four. So seeing this limit, uh, 10 power 5, what do you think? Like we know we can do only 10 power 8 operations per second, right? So if we solve this in n square, that would be 10 to the power of 10. So basically it's uh, n power square, right? So here n is 10 power 5 and square is like 10 to the power of 4 power 2, then it's 10 power 10. Then our system would not be doing the 10 power 10 operations per second. So that's why it would give us time limit exceeded. So we had to think of solving it in either O of n log n or O of n. But here O of n is possible guys. But yeah, let's go step by step. This is the ball plate code given. Here the method takes the prices array and returns the int. So basically this is the profit which we gonna make. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you're ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So let's look at the approaches guys. So first one is a brute force approach. So what is brute force? Ba basically brute force is just like trying all possible combinations. So here, uh, what is the intuition for this approach? We had to check the price difference for every pair of days. For every day I calculate the profit for selling the stock on the subsequent day J. So keep track of the maximum profit in this process. For a given example, we have the graph plotted. So this is the prices 715364. So here, uh, we need what we need to keep track of. So basically here we need to keep track of where we buy. So that is first day we buy and the next day we sell it. So for every subsequent such days, we had to keep track of the profit we achieve. Then uh, we'll be able to see the maximum profit by uh, checking like max of each thing, right? That's the overview. So what are steps required to solve this? First is loop through each day as the by day I. And the next step is for each by day, loop through all future days J as a potential sell days. Let's say this is the buy day. And then what we need to do, we have to loop through all the future days, like starting from here as a potential sell days. Then next step is what calculate the profit as price of J minus price of I for each pair. So for each such pair, we have to calculate the profit. So here it's uh, like one minus seven, it's minus six. It's not possible. So just like that. So five minus seven like that. And then 
so basically we need to check the profit profit formula i told right so it's just like selling price minus cost price so this is the selling price then this is the cost price at this point of time then 5 minus 7 minus 2 hope you got the idea and then we keep track of maximum profit during this iterations after that we return the maximum profit at the end simple right so it's just like we have to calculate the profit and uh, check the maximum of all those profit we have and then return the maximum profit so very simple guys so let's look into the code for this so firstly what we did we initialized one variable to keep track of our maximum profit that is very standard and we require that that's what the question asks us to return at the end right and then what are we doing we're just looping through each day as a potential by day whatever the steps we have that i translate to code so for looping i use a for loop we can use while loop as well okay since we need to keep track of the uh, index it's better to use like for loop it's very easy we don't need to manage that index here when while loop we have to manage the index so here i use the for loop for that simplicity and in next step for each by day loop through all future days as a potential sell days so we know right like if we buy on that day we can sell only on the future so for all the future things we should want it to be i plus one it's not i so excluding i we want it from i plus one till the length prices so this is exclusive so we will be getting like length of uh, uh, prices minus one only that index iteration okay and then step three here what we have we just calculate the profit of it if sold on day j so if we sell on this day j the profit is like price of j minus price of i simple right we know the formula so that's what we applied here after that we update the maximum profit if the current profit is higher so we are just updating the maximum profit we initialize it to zero so obviously uh, like if uh, we, we can't make out a profit we had a return that's why we put it zero here and then here what we are doing we are updating the maximum profit so maximum profit is equals to max of this max profit comma whatever profit we have at this point of j day okay then uh, after all these loop iterations are done we just return the maximum profit that is maximum profit variable itself so pretty straightforward hope you got the idea so what is the time complexity here time complexity here is o of n square since we are using the nested for loops right and then the space complexity here is o of 1 we are just using the simple variable max profit nothing much so that is o of 1 constant space so i got the code ready here let me try running this so yeah this is accepted for two test cases let me try submitting this you would see it's time limit exceeded error see guys the time limit is exceeded because i said we can perform only 10 power 8 operations per second since here the n upper limit is 10 power 5 uh, it is like doing square on it root 10 power 10 so it's not feasible operations per second that's why we'll get tle so if you get the tle don't worry so you had to worry only if you get the error so if you get the tle we can optimize it further it's cool so in some interviews like interviews are okay if you just uh, provide this brute force solution so congratulations you made up to brute force so approach to single pass with minimum buy price stacking so basically if you look into the graph what all we really care about we care about the maximum profit which we obtain so for that maximum profit we want the minimum price right so if we just keep track of this minimum price we don't want that double iterations n square iterations right so basically we just need to keep track of this minimum price encountered so far and then we can calculate the profit on the fry for the jth day so that's the intuition right it's a basic observation guys nothing fancy okay so what are steps required here so here initialize variables what variables we want minimum price to keep track of the lowest price that's we just discussed and the maximum profit to keep track of the highest profit this is obviously required because this is what we have to return and then we just loop through each day in their prices array so this is the prices array we have to loop through obviously then update min price to be the minimum of the current min price and the price on that day so as we iterate we just need to update the minimum price that's what we have to really keep track of right that's what we're just doing it here and then in step four we have to calculate the potential profit if the stock were sold on the current day so if you sell on the current day you just need to calculate the profit it's obvious step required same as a previous approach and then this is also same as previous approach this is step five we have to update the maximum profit if the current profit is greater than the previous max profit cool we are cool till here and then we just need to return the max profit after iterating to all this it's very simple right so just a basic observation is that we just need to keep track of the minimum price that's the difference 
okay so see guys in step one what we are doing we had to initialize the variables for that we initialize the two variables we just discussed a uh, min price and the max profit so here we initialize min price to float of infinity it's better to take it as a float of infinity which should be 9999 and something so whenever we encoded a minimum value and we compare this between the min price and the current price then that would be give us a, a minimum of the two so here we kept this a uh, minimum price to is equal to float of infinity why because like the in the question they mentioned that the maximum value of this price of i is 10 power 4 okay when we do this uh initialize to float of infinity this would be around some 99999 and something like some bigger value so when we do comparison that would be uh, making us to uh, take the least price right uh between those two that's why we keep instance to maximum value okay next thing is the max profit uh why zero because in the worst case when we can't make any profit we have to get into that's why i kept it instance to zero Next is step two guys, we just need to iterate the each day's prices. So here we are just doing price in prices because we don't want that index to be tracked here. It's okay just to have a price here. That's why we are doing this approach. And then next thing we have to keep track of the minimum price so far. That's what we require here right in step three. So that's why we are just doing min price equals to min of min price to come current price. Right. So if the current price is like what seven. So then it, uh, this would be instead to seven because this would be a maximum value and the minimum value will give us a minimum between these two. And then step four, we calculate the profit if sold today. So what is the profit formula? So it's selling price minus cost price. Selling price for today is what the price what we have. And then the min price. So here we have the min price right? that one goes to here. So profit is goes to price minus min price. And then in the step five, we update the maximum profit we can make out. So here we we have zero. So here when we like when it comes to a case where like we get some negative value, it would be ignored. Keeps the positive value to the max profit. So that's what we require, right? At the end, we just hit in the maximum profit. So very simple, guys, right? You just learned it. So what is time compressed here? It's off end because we're doing only one iteration and we're processing each element in the list only once. That's a off end solution. And then the space complexity is off one because we're just using the two variables, main price and max profit. So it's constant space, off one. So I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So cool, it's accepted for two test cases. Let me try subbutton this. Cool guys, it's accepted solution for all the test cases. One thing, don't care about this number because that could be where even we submit this next time. That totally depends on number of requests the server is handling at the moment. See, when we submit this other time, what would it go up to? See, now it increase. So that's what so basically this would vary on based on the number of requests the server get so don't worry about this if your solution is pretty much optimized and it's accepted that's cool congrats guys you just mastered it i hope this technique sticks with you and helps you tackle the similar problems in future keep practicing and applying what you have learned and that's a wrap and solve the best time to buy and sell stock problem with two different approaches if you found this breakdown useful drop a comment below and share your thoughts don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more in-depth coding tutorials. See you in the next one.